Welcome to Design World's How to Calculate series, where you learn how to apply the most important equations for sizing, selecting, and comparing linear motion and motion control products. In this session, sponsored by Maxon, we'll learn how speed and back EMF are related and how to use back EMF to calculate the speed of a DC motor. First, let's review two of the fundamental laws governing electric motor operation. The first is Faraday's law, which states that any change in the magnetic environment of a coil of wire will cause a voltage or electromotive force, denoted EMF, to be induced in the coil. Regardless of how the change is produced, whether it's by moving the magnet and coil relative to each other or by changing the magnetic field, a voltage will be generated. The equation for this induced voltage, known as back EMF, is shown here. Working hand-in-hand -hand with Faraday's law is Lenz's law, which states that the polarity of the induced EMF is such that it produces a current whose magnetic field opposes the change that produced it. In other words, the induced magnetic field inside any loop of wire always acts to keep the magnetic flux in the loop constant. So according to Lenz's law, the induced voltage, or back EMF, will oppose the driving voltage. That's the reason for the negative sign in the back EMF equation. So what does back EMF have to do with speed? Well, for a DC motor, angular speed is directly proportional to the back EMF that the motor generates. Notice the back EMF constant, K sub E, in this equation. This is important because motors are designed with a back EMF constant that allows the motor to draw the rated current and deliver the rated torque when running at the rated speed. To better understand this relationship between back EMF and speed, let's examine a simple motor circuit. According to the conservation of energy, the net voltage across the motor will always equal the supply voltage plus the back EMF voltage. In this example, the supply voltage equals 195 volts and the back EMF voltage is 45 volts. But remember, the back EMF opposes the supply voltage, so the net voltage is 150 volts. Again, using our simple motor circuit diagram, we can check this with Ohm's law, which states that voltage equals current multiplied by resistance. In this circuit, the current is 10 amps and the resistance is 15 ohms. So the net voltage is 150 volts, in agreement with our analysis above. For a real world example, let's look at what happens when a load is applied to a DC motor. We start out at an initial point on the motor's torque speed curve, where T sub zero and omega sub zero intersect. When the load torque on the motor is increased from T sub zero to T sub one, following the downward sloping speed torque curve, you can see that the motor speed decreases. But recall that back EMF is directly related to motor speed, so when the speed decreases, so does the induced back EMF that's opposing the supply voltage. This means the voltage across the motor will increase from V sub zero to V sub one. This increase in voltage also causes the current across the motor to increase and the additional current produces the extra torque the motor needs in order to regain its original speed with the increased load. This is seen here as a move on the horizontal axis from T sub zero to T sub one. So back EMF is an important concept to understand in DC motor operation, since it's directly related to the speed a motor can achieve and in turn, how the motor responds to changes in load. For more information on DC motors and other motion control topics, Visit motioncontroltips.com or designworldonline.com. Thanks for watching.